we had talked about what the basic principle of episode three was. David and Dan said they wanted it to be the ultimate battle between good and evil. The idea of doing a 45 minute non-stop battle to me was terrifying because battle fatigue, you know, you just get bored, you get exhausted. The primary task on three is how do we keep this interesting? The battle usually has a beginning, a middle and an ending. We know we need that. We couldn't just have a battle. We had to follow the characters through the story and we shot more or less every single character story all the way through. If I was out there right now... You'd die. There's nothing you can do. What I try to do is go with each actor and take them through their journey from the beginning of the battle to the end of the battle, even if it was off camera, so that they understood where they were going to and where they were coming from. There's no need to execute me, Sir Devos. I'll be dead before the dawn. We ended up with a set that was really quite interesting. We built the set, and I just said, we've got to shoot this here. Because if we shoot it here, then we're going to create the environment for the actors, and if we create the environment for the actors, nothing will beat that level of intensity. We need to break up where we're shooting and what it looks like so that we feel marked differences between the different locations, even though it's all essentially happening in Winterfell. Hopefully what it does is it refreshes the audience. But how do we take it one step further? And so what we decided was give each act a genre. Act one is suspense. Act two, that's the horror movie. And then act three is an action movie. For the first 20 minutes, it's all about tension and it's build up. The best way to do build up in any sort of kind of monster movies is to not see the monster. From that emerged this idea, what if we don't see them until they actually are right in front of us? Finally, the monster shows up, and it's insurmountable, wiping everything off the map. That particular sequence, Fog of War sequence, was three or four days inside on the set. You've got 600 guys, 80 stunt guys, men and women, and now you take them onto a stage, pump it full of smoke, then have everybody attack each other. It was really painful. Stunts on this show, I think, have got more important as time has gone by, because you're killing hundreds of thousands of people, we're burning people alive, like, you, you name it, we're doing it. That doesn't include any of the buck work, which is months and months of Kit and Amelia and the Night King, Vladimir. fog of war sequence. The whole point is nobody knows where anybody is. Everyone underestimated how powerful, how brutal this attack was going to be. They lasted a fraction of the time they thought they were going to last. All of these are reasons for us to feel the chaos of that particular moment. Grey Worm tells the Unsullied to stand their ground and protect the retreat. That felt like a really good moment to evolve his character beyond just Grey Worm. The emotional trauma that he's going to go through. Open the gate! The retreat is a signal for us to start to get more of a sense of geography and where we are. By being really clear about setting that up, means that you can then break it all down. So we've got this idea of changing genres over acts. We've just killed Lady Mormont. And we've just killed a giant. And so how are you going to top that? She's our button to that sequence, and then we need to get out of there. Act two, from the moment that Arya enters into the castle, that's the horror movie. We need to keep the pressure up, but we need to give people something different. 
you can move to something that's visually different, so it's refreshing in that respect. One of the things we did when we shot that sequence is took Maisie in there. We were going to have nine whites or something in there, and I gave them all a path, and then I told her she had to make her way through it without being seen. We figured out this whole choreographed piece where everything was a near miss and everything was just about not seeing and everything had to be silent. And it was really fun to do. And the last third of the movie, we move out of a horror movie into an action movie. John survives the white saved by Danny. John heads into Winterfell and we follow him on a journey which takes him through all the Winterfell courtyards that we've seen previously. We needed John to bear witness to all of the characters that we know and we care about, that he knows and he cares about, dying, essentially being overwhelmed, and for him to have to stay on track, to know that the reason he's there is to get the Night King and that humanity depends on that choice. One of the things that I talked to Kit about specifically was the exhaustion setting in. All I kept doing is putting obstacles in his way to stop him from getting to the Night King. At some point, we just ran out of stunt guys to throw at John. The expectation is that John's going to save the day, because that's what John does, he saves the day. And the reality is that he doesn't. Try as he might, he never gets past the Serian. Once you get to this point where you've got your Ice Dragon and your Night King and you're dead and what have you, there's no credible version of this story where the good guys win. It was Ian's final sequence and he was very, very, very keen to get it right. There was a lot of input from Ian and from Amelia about making sure that their characters stayed true to who they were. And when Ian was lying on the ground, Pulled him aside and I said, try and apologize to her, but don't make it. I think that really sparked something for Amelia. It was an apology on both fronts about all the things that had not been. Finally, the Night King and Bran were finding each other. Theon. You're a good man. It was the end of Game of Thrones from a particular perspective. <laughs> Basically, Dan and David let me break all the Game of Thrones rules for that sequence. It's all super slow motion. It's all heightened reality, which is not what they usually do. And then we have to have this special stunt where the Night King is taken out at the last minute by Arya. I don't think anyone knew at the beginning what we were getting ourselves into. There were so many people involved in this, and there was so much thought that went into every single section. You know, it physically hurt to make that show. In television, this has probably never been done before, and it's probably never going to get done again. <laughs>